thank you for joining us here at the NXL Windy City Major. It's my distinct pleasure to be joined by Brett Messer of Infamous, pro player, New England legend, good friend of mine. How you doing today, Brett? Excellent. Thanks for having me. Feeling good after punching your ticket to Sunday, I assume? Yeah, good Saturday for us. Nice, nice. We love to see it. Um, Brett's going to help me out here calling this last set of semi-pro action. We got Phoenix Rising taking on Brawl. Phoenix Rising, WCPPL team making their NXL debut for the year, playing really strong. Brandon Unger, former pro player, really asserting his dominance. Uh, what do you like to see on this field out here? What do you think's winning up, up at the pro field? I think a lot of teams are finding success in the middle. You can shoot guys going wide on both sides of the field. So uh, some teams are struggling to get wide on the snake side, so they're using the middle and the Doritos. Some teams are having success on the snake side. So I think we'll see a lot of middle action here. Brawl struggling this event. They're going to run deep to the snake off the break. It looks like they make it. Matched by Phoenix Rising also in the snake. That looks like it's Cohen. I think that's Smith. For Brawl getting into the 50 snake. Poison situation. Both sides on each side of the bunker. Sipe for Brawl. Cohen for Phoenix Rising. He comes through and gets him clean. I don't think Brawl knew there was a snake player. He's going to come over the top and blow up the D-side tower. So that's two quick ones for Sipe over here for Phoenix Rising. He's got Unger backing him up over there. Now on the wrap in the 50 snake. If he goes to the snake on their side, he's got to a good shot on this tower guy but he's going to be blocked out for most of these kills if he doesn't go forward and that's tom seller is getting into the snake side wedge he's looking into the sun over here this time of day it looks it becomes a little difficult sees his pack misses unable to put a shot on him so he goes into the brick and they're going to trade good job by sellers to get him out but phoenix rising firmly in control of this point unger immediately fills off that chaos I think there's three alive for Phoenix Rising. They got the snake, they got the snake tower, and they got the uh, Dorito side can coming through, shooting at the brawl player in the Dorito brick. I think that might have been the last brawl body. Maybe one other over there. But Phoenix Rising making quick, well, not quick work, but pretty solid work of brawl. Yeah, it, it's their NXL debut, but I believe their coach pretty much full-time for WC uh, by Corey Field. So Corey Field of, of Seattle, Seattle Thunder, Thunder yeah. really you know, legendary year pro. Yeah, so, I mean, they should have a good wealth of knowledge in that camp. And WCPPL is a great league out there run by Mike Himmon. Tons of competition out on the West Coast who don't always make the trips to the NXL events. Yeah, I think any of the teams in those divisions are, are equally comparable in semi-pro and D2 and D3 here. Now we're going to see Annapolis A team walking out here. Missing Bay State Bandits player Pat O'Brien didn't make the trip for this one for A team. He's been with them for a little while. Yeah, I, I chatted with him this week. I know his dog was having some health issues. He, he, he was out of practice last week, so he's just taking some personal time right now. Yeah, it makes sense. You got to make sure the pup's okay. Yeah. Um, so A team, I don't believe that they can move on to Sunday. They lost a tough match earlier today against notorious yeah and, and i know they were in the conversation uh to potentially move up to the pro division next year but not making sunday here is probably going to hurt those chances yeah they lost to padres earlier um yeah you know it's not a two dog race it's uh blast camp and pb fit up yeah. at the top you know pb fit obviously you ran into those guys as ac dallas last year i've been playing against those guys a long time down at fit in texas even when they were in d3 like we would still run points with them from time to time so those guys got it yeah and they love to play paintball and they play all the time blast camp the number two team in semi-pro right now so another team poised to maybe make a run at that pro spot but a team Getting Ethan Adams, number 88, quick into the snake, too. He's played well over there. They got Mike Kerr in the Dorito side wedge, sh shooting inside to make sure that Blast Camp can't match them in the snake. Blast Camp does lose one off the break. So A team with five to Blast Camp's four. Adams shooting inside. A team loses number 24 on their Dorito side, trying to bump out. So I believe it's a four on four situation here. Mike Kerr coming into the center. You see Soap, Chapeau in that snake side tower, trying to keep Adams in check. I've heard good things about Ethan Adams. Yeah, he's played great out here this weekend. You know, they lost a tough game earlier today, but 
playing with a lot of pace, knows his shots. You can tell he's put in the work over here. And he wants, you know, he's not poised to go right now, but he wants to. Mike Kerr slipped into that juice box and is able to shoot the blast camp player trying to fill out to the snake corner. So four on three, a team advantage. It's the Dorito three, the Dorito wedge in the snake side tower. Soap trying to fill out to the snake side. Aztec heard and see it. He's looking inside. He's going to go to sleep as Chapeau, as uh, Soap fills out to the corner. A team losing Kerr. I think that's Soap who shot him. Soap now coming into the snake. Ethan Adams knows he's there. Slips forward. Ooh. I think he shot him over the top. Yeah, wow. Ethan Adams gets him clean. Now he's going to get the he wrap. He has a hopper. huge hopper hit on him. So that's going to be a penalty. Prob should be a mate. Not going to call a major, but. I, I like the call, the non-call. Yeah, there. I like the non-call there. It's a trade. He didn't right, shoot anyone didn't, afterward. Didn't out, yeah, so. yeah. So after all that chaos, Blast Camp is going to be left with two players. Just making sure there's no one left in that snake. And then going to walk in. Maybe wait for the towel. Feeling comfortable. I have a little chat. Making sure each other's clean. You sure? You sure? Should I hit it? They're not blowing it. Should I hit it? Okay, I'll hit it. Uh, maybe not. Wait a couple seconds. Now I'm going to hit it. Blast camp going to take a 1-0 lead over A team. There's a lot of gaming of the, the margin, you know, this late in the tournament. So that's a big thing on Saturday afternoon. So I haven't looked at the situation with these teams, but, you know. Yeah. Not, not buzzing, buzzing, running in for the buzzer. Right, right. And so if you're Blast Camp, you just, I think they've punched their ticket, but if A-Team beats them out of pride, it throws off the entire bracket for who gets in as the two seed, I believe, based on margins and all that. And going into Sunday, you want that number one seed. I mean, whether it for earns sure. you a buy or, or you're just going to play the worst team exactly. going in. Are you a big uh, watching the scores, doing the math guy? Or are you I'm, someone who's kind of like, guy. you're yeah, that guy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm that guy on the team with Ryan Hall. We uh, need so. to win by three yes. to get in, yes. to get the wild card. Yeah, you need someone on the team, at least one guy. And, and that's kind of our vibe on Infamous is it's like a team effort, and it allows, it frees Travis up to focus on game plans and personnel and not have to think about that stuff. Yeah, that's great. I mean, when I was coaching, I hated doing that, and I was preferred if someone else would. <laughs> yeah, it's really nerdy, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> running through every scenario that's yeah. possible yeah now coming back into brawl against phoenix rising brawl just struggling out here today yeah. nate marshall super athletic player he's had great success getting into the snake off the break but he's been dying out of there quite a bit makes it gets into the snake too gonna take a look inside unger and the snake aztec for phoenix rising they also have both cans crossed in the dorito one they're in that Oh, they they lost one off the break, so it's five on four advantage for Brawl here, and they're in the snake too. Ref running in to check the Dorito side can for Phoenix Rising. He says that's rub. Brawl coming into the snake tower, trying to figure out what's left. Nate Marshall throwing a full pot at the 50 snake. I think Nate just isn't getting the information maybe that he needs about if there's anyone in there with him. A little tentative. Unger filled out to the snake corner so that Marshall's contested down the wire. I do like the Nagasaki move there to try to, to trick the 50 snake if there was a 50 snake. Tell me the origin of the term Nagasaki. I've never I, heard I it called I don't even know that. where it came from. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it was said to me, so is, I, I is that a it. Is that a... Uh, it sounds like a bad reference to... World War II. It, it very well, maybe. <laughs> like, very well, like maybe. the pod is the bomb. I'm yeah. not going to spell it out yeah, any we, longer. We don't need to go any Nate Marshall down one. the wire for Brawl. They got four alive, maybe five alive for Brawl. Yep. But in the meantime, Phoenix Rising has slipped out to the Dorito side as we enter long shadow mode out here. Unger gets shot from the inside in the snake corner. Tom Sellers coming through the center for Brawl. He's going to bunk out the snake can. I think that was the last player for Phoenix Rising, and Brawl's going to tie this up one-to-one. -one. Tom Sellers, owner of Southern Maryland Paintball. That's where Brawl practices. Great practice host. Really nice group of guys who have been playing together a long time. Going to tie this up against Phoenix Rising. He's come out here and played spoiler in the NXL semi-pro division so far. A lot of exciting action out here on the semi-pro field. Who's looking strong up in pro besides you guys? 
You don't have to say you're afraid, but you can tell me who's looking Oh, no. Uh, I actually haven't watched the afternoon bracket. I played some gotcha. seven-man mechanical today. Gotcha. Uh, cool. I- Impact was definitely looking strong. Yeah. Uh, Heat struggled yesterday, and I don't know if they turn it around today. Like, they, they typically do that. Um, yeah, they lost to New Orleans Hurricanes. Yeah, so Hurricanes yeah. looking strong. Yeah. Uh, they were 3-0 and last I saw. Uh, Rebo was two and zero yesterday. Yeah. I'm sure they kept rolling today, at least at least to some degree. Strong play out of Benny Carroll, a New England guy. Brett Messer's a New England guy up in Maine. We love to shout him out. Yeah, Benny taught me how to play paintball, man. So all all the love in the world to to Benny and friends with a lot of the Rebo guys. So happy to see them do well. You got Harrison Fry on your squad as well. Yeah, he's I got a sprained MCL up. right now. No so, way. Yeah, so he's, he's out, out this event. Yeah. Oh, that's a bummer to hear. It's Harry Fry really. One of the dy- most dynamic players in the pro division at this point has really made a name for himself. For sure, for sure. He's a constant weapon out there. Now coming back in to Blast Camp against A Team. Blast Camp up one, putting two in that snake can, trying to go heavy guns. A Team also puts two in the snake can. They launch Kerr up into the Dorito side. Wedge, he's going to try to keep Blast Camp short on the snake side. A Team gets into. The insert over here, I believe that's Ethan Adams. I think Jackson Fry is calling for a kill over on the Dorito side. I'm not sure if he's going to get it. I think he just got bounced in the gun there. He got lucky. Bounced in the gun. Yeah. Humid out here in the <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. Eight, um, Blast Camp's going to lose their Dorito side can player. And then also Jackson Frey out of the snake side can. So I believe it's five, four on three for A team as they lose one out of their back line. So it's the outside Dorito, the Dorito Tower, and now the snake insert for Blast Camp. A team loses another out of the snake side wedge. So it's a three on three situation. And both teams have made a lot of moves in the last five seconds. So I think they're both trying to figure out the situation. Ethan Adams coming into the snake too, undetected. I don't think anyone knows he's here. He, I like to see him come forward. He's really hung out in his own, you know, snake too a lot. So yeah, far and he's got to be careful that soap in the Dorito side wedge doesn't pick him up. I think so. He just got the kill on the Dorito. Got forward. the kill on the Dorito, which is huge. I, La Papa, I think, knows he's there in the insert. Now he's, he's going to shoot. Uh, I don't think he shot soap. No, he's shooting a blind shot over this brick, and I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think he put one in. Soap went into the Dorito brick and then to the Dorito wall, and now yep. he might be launching undetected. I think he just shot Kerr in the back. Now retreating into the Dorito, yeah, he Dorito brick. Now there. he gets shot. La Papa tries to fill to the snake corner. And this one's going to go to 18. And Adams getting raspy, calling for his kill. Get him out on his foot. And 18 going to tie this up 1-1 one, one in one of the, these really great back and forth points I'm loving seeing on this field. I'm really liking the technical slow point back and forth on this one rather than that like bloody knuckles you know, launch down the field really quickly stuff that we see a lot about here in the NXL. I don't know about you. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the really fast-paced stuff can take a little bit of skill out of the game, and, you know, it, it is, it's fun to watch, of course, and you love to see really high-scoring games, but it's nice when it slows down just enough that you really get to see, like, the skill that some players have. And also the working in pairs, the high-level communication, the putting in game plans. You were just saying you were playing mechanical seven-man. We're New England guys. We love to see stuff that resembles seven-man paintball, yes, or at least course. I do. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, I mean, you look at Dynasty. They've won, you know, how many tournaments and how many major tournaments in a row now. And, and I think communication, you know, along with experience, which brings communication, is one of the reasons that they're so successful if you – if you watch them play, it's just their their communications on another level. So the teaching tool that I've been recommending people watching this live cast is uh, Mafia Productions on YouTube has been miking up Dynasty players at practice and the level of their commu- communication, how often they're not just saying codes, right? They're asking they're question. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's conversation. It's not shouting, receiving and gaining high level information. It's one of the best teaching tools that you can have out there. Go watch Mafia Productions on YouTube. The Dynasty players mic'd up in practice. I frequently describe just calling out bunker names, elementary communication. It's yes. like the most entry-level form. Yeah, and Dynasty has the PhD in it, communication. Yeah, exactly, exactly. As Nate Marshall runs Snake off the break, he makes it again. I think Phoenix he Rising. Brandon Unger out of the back center there. Yeah, That's a shooting tough one shooters. Me. That's big on this layout. Huge on this layout. Uh, we just saw Royal City Sea Dogs, a Canadian team, punch their ticket to Sunday. Do they have Andy Copcock playing with them? I don't believe so. Okay. I, I haven't been calling that name. He might be wearing someone else's jersey, but, you know, having a ton of success shooting shooters, uh, PB Fit as well, doing the same. 
That's how they knocked <laughs> out the boys can mob. Shoot. Yeah. Those boys can shoot. Yeah. So Nate Marshall and the Snake 2 seeing another body come off for Phoenix Rising. One body coming off for Brawls. I believe it's a four on three in Brawls' favor. Nate Marshall now crawling into the 50 Snake. Another body coming off for Phoenix Rising, trying to make a move on the Dorito side. So it's just their Dorito side can and the Snake side Aztec crossed up, trying to weather an attack from Brawl. Nate Marshall uh, concerned with a snake wire that doesn't exist. If he crawls into the snake too, he can definitely shoot this Phoenix Rising player in the back. He's a little wary of doing it. Trying to stay alive after, I think, having a couple unlucky deaths the match previous. And Brawl now following up with a Dorito side push. I like Brawl coming right to the 50 snake here. I'd love to see him crawl into their side. Jeff Witt. No, no, no. Someone else for Brawl on the Dorito side. Coming up into Phoenix Rising's juice box. Phoenix Rising just holding a strong cross. Now Nate Marshall getting. Yeah, shot him in the foot there. He can hop out yeah. wide. Yeah, shoots him in the pack. Should wrap on the. Going to wrap on the Dorito the can. Yeah. Gets the last kill. So Brawl going to take a 2-1 lead there. Love to see it from Nate Marshall. And I love the dicing up the pack. You know, sometimes those hits get missed in the cleanup effort. It turns into a kill two that points later. That used to later. be a thing in old school X-Ball. Like, you would piece people up. You'd shoot their pods. I mean, you do all kinds of stuff to make it hard to turn it around in two minutes. It's a little easier to split deck now. That's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, so, uh, Brawl is not moving on regardless of the outcome here. Phoenix yeah. Rising has punched their ticket. Yes. That... Phoenix Rising is 3-2-0 oh, in one. I think they're definitely mm. in. And I'm almost certain that Brawl is out for sure. Okay. I'll try to confirm that real quick. Those are some East Coast guys too, I think, right? Yeah, Brawl, yeah. Brawl from Maryland. Yeah. Um, New England Wreckage and New England Hurricanes. We would go down to Maryland and practice them a little bit, uh, get a really good practice at Southern Maryland Paintball owned by Tom Sellers. Yeah, yeah. I think they played that TSXL we went and played down in New Jersey. Oh, cool. It was like an eight-team like, yeah, premier that. division or something that was like that was a mix semi-pro of rules. Yeah. It was like Bandits, old Bandits right, guys. Right, right. Like, and you played under the Bandits name? Yeah. So Brett Messer, former player and owner of the Bay State Bandits, which was one of the best legend, uh, best divisional teams in New England for a long time. Benny Carroll, player coach on that team. Uh, uh, just about Bryan. every one of the guys on that team went pro. Harrison Fry. At w with one team or another. Um, Rosati, who went yep. up to N NYX. Anthony yeah. Vitale, the junior. Or yeah. the third, actually. He's the, the third. third. Yep. Yeah, he yep. played on NYX for a bit. So, Bay State Band, it's really, really Kyle talented. Niccolo now Kyle Nicolau, of course, killing now it for the Ironman. Finally getting his call up to pro and playing well for the Ironman. All right. Last game in A team here. One, one, one. one game. Let's see what Blast Camp goes with. They're pulling up two at the like snake can and run snake off yeah, the break. They shoot but the Blast Camp shot. snake runner early. So they're so pretty dialed there. Both teams liking this two in the snake can off the break. Adams catches one, trying to get into the blind spot and make his move into the insert. But they storm Kerr up into the snake side wedge. Don't think he got his gun up in time to catch the Blast Camp player filling into the snake side insert. That's Jackson Frey. But Kerr should be able to stop any more progress from Frey. Meanwhile, 54 tries to fill into the insert. He gets shot. So I believe it's a four on three advantage for Blast Camp. A team in the Dorito three getting checked out by the ref. He's called clean and they got Mike Kerr in the wedge there. I'm not I, sure if they have. I can a see why teams are doubling this this can on the snake side. There's good shots on both sides of it. It is hard to get out wide, but man, it gets really tight in there really fast. And that's why you're seeing a guy walk off early every game for the teams that are doubling that up. Yeah, it's not a situation you want to stay in there long. Um, Adams did try to make his move forward, but got caught. Uh, a team has three players all on the Dorito side. They're in the Dorito three, the Dorito one, and the Dorito side wedge. Meanwhile, Blast Camp has the snake, or insert the snake wedge, the outside Dorito, and the Dorito side can. So four on three advantage for Blast Camp in this tie game, nine minutes left. Blast Camp's definitely a potent team. They won the Astra Invitational last year, which was primarily uh, lower half pro teams and a couple of semi pro teams. I played out there with the New England Hurricanes. That's right. And you know they were they were pretty dominant. Um, and they definitely have the makings of a professional team. They have a really good support system with the owner and the field that they've got out there. Right near here, actually, they're a hometown team here. Yeah, Virgil uh, Frey, Jackson's dad, I believe, owns the field, which is called Blast Camp. Yes, and, and it, apparently it's one of the oldest fields in the country. I didn't realize oh. that. They've been there like 30 years. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. So he's like a legacy field owner, which I just learned that recently. That's super cool. And now dicing off another 18 player, killing Mike Kerr and the 50 wall 
Dorito player for a team. So just one body left alive. Never mind none as Blast Camp is going to come through and take a 2 1 lead. Soap always fired up, approaching the buzzer. Sometimes you see him do a little wing fly thing. Sometimes he shouts at the other pit. I really love the signature player. celebration. Yeah. You got to have a good six well, seller if you're going to be. I don't know if I have one, man. I, I don't know. I've, I've busted a few out, but I don't know if any of them have stuck yet. I mean, you know, Pat Kraft and NYX Northeast guys with the the uh, hopper dump, probably the, one what? of the most significant and influential. For sure. I would say, like, the Trevor Reeser barrel drag That's is That's the other one too. I was thinking of, yeah. Two of the most iconic, for, for sure. For sure, for sure. Both great ones. Using the equipment as a prop to be a showman. We love to see showmanship on the paintball field, or at least I do. I, I absolutely do. Hey, what would you think of the pain game yesterday? Loved it. That, yes, I loved it too. I'm loving to hear people say that. Dylan Boyum, uh, JC, JC Cornell. Uh, yeah, I mean, they mutually just teed off. It's like hockey, you know, two guys decided to drop the mitts and they were men about it. And Steve Schloss said the same thing, just like hockey. Yeah, I mean, it's the, and it's kind of the, I mean, that's the mindset, right? Like, you're not going to back down. They're not going to back down. You're trying to show up for your boys and, you know, ultimately that's what happened. So it's I, dramatic. It's brutal. It's paintball. I'm all about it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't get suspended, to be honest. Oh, that's great. I didn't even know that. I walked over to the pro pit yesterday, and that's the old first thing I saw. Now we're looking at Brawl and Phoenix Rising. Brawl with a one-point lead, sending Nate Marshall out to the snake. He runs it deep and wide and makes it again. Very difficult to shoot, going straight into the snake, too. Phoenix Rising, filling Unger out to the corner. I don't know if he knows he's in the snake. Phoenix Rising in the Dorito side tower on the cross. You typically see when when a semi pro or lower team uses a pro player, they they keep that pro player in the back. They don't risk him on the break. But I don't know if that's helping Phoenix Rising here. I think getting Brandon Unger a little bit more active in the in the attack might might help them here. And when they've been successful, we've seen him deep in the snake often. It, I think it's because Nate Marshall's been making it off the snake. He's been a little bit wary to go in there and trade. Yeah, he wants to protect his body. But I completely agree with you. Also, this is a layout where. You know, a lot of times you're seeing front guys playing back center and filling. It's not yeah. really a back guy type spot, so to speak. Yeah. So. Yeah, because that back center is no good off the break, but you do like to have a shooter there. Uh, Phoenix Rising gets into the Dorito side wedge, and he's just pumping paint into the 50 snake, hoping that Nate Marshall will crawl in there and show his pack or something. Nate Marshall looking inside. One Phoenix Rising player coming off the Dorito side. Brawl with five players alive. Tom Sellers here in the corner, backing up Nate Marshall. That's Brandon Unger in the snake corner for uh, Phoenix Rising. Just looking inside, trying to figure out the situation. Brawl is going to lose one off the Dorito side, however. I believe that was White. Oh, and then Phoenix Rising losing Unger out of the corner. Seller is feeding that information to Nate Marshall, who then bumps and checks the Dorito side wedge. Not, Don't think there's anyone there. Oh, he is, but he's dead now, too. That might have been the last player for Phoenix Rising. Nope, Nate Marshall calling the 20. I believe that's the big Dorito, too. Just one body left alive. Great communication and a smart close by Brawl. You know, Brawl had the potential to play this way all tournament, but they were just dropping bodies in their closes. They weren't able to close confidently out here, and now they're doing it. It's a little too little too late, but I love to see them bringing a tough game to They're Phoenix a team Rising. that's got some potency. Yeah. You know, they're sometimes in athleticism. They're right yeah, 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 yeah. and too. they've got like that hard nosed attitude. Yeah. You know, they've got, they definitely got some things going for them. Yeah, so good point for Brawl there. Now coming back to Blast Camp and A Team. Blast Camp trying to tighten up with that one seed. We're just getting the update from Rob, the ultimate ref out here. There was a penalty on Phoenix Rising for getting shot in the chest and playing on. Sometimes a guy gets shot. I kind of like when uh, in Go Sports they would cut to the ref on the field. Yeah, that was cool. And they would explain the penalty. Major number 23 playing on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it things like, we can do to make it more accessible to outsiders who don't quite understand what's going on in the field, I think is really important. For so. sure. Like we like to say that Vince is talking to the. Uh, the, the parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles, and I'm talking to the players because I'm just speaking code out here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We were just seeing Del Senor on uh, A team walk into the box, A team down one against Blast Camp. Blast Camp looking like they're poised for a deep snake run mm -hmm. right here. Nope, pulling up short and going two in the snake can again, but running deep to the juice box in the center off the break. He lives, pulls up his gun, but it doesn't catch Adams. Adams in the snake. 
shooting at the juice box. He's calling it out. I think it's a five on five breakout over here. We're looking at La Papa and the snake insert. Blast camp already into the Dorito three, but Adam's getting into the snake too. A team also has a Dorito side wing player who's shooting inside. A team loses one off their Dorito side. Their Dorito three player gets shot out. Now Adam's getting into the 50 snake. He's got no one on his wire. And uh, Blast Camp also loses their Dorito one. So five on three advantage for A team. Blows up. Great bounce shot there. Doherty with the bounce shot off the wing. Great field notch by Adams. And you Who's... said that earlier. He knew his shots, and that's that's exactly putting that on display right there. He gets in the snake one, sees that there's a juice box there, and then later 17? gets into the 50 okay. snake. 17, La Papa shot. tries yeah. to fill the snake. Oh. Delson, Yorn and him collide a little bit. Looked unintentional. Yeah. Jackson Frey trying to get out wide on the snake side and catch Adam sleeping, but doesn't put the shot on him. Last ditch effort. Not going to happen as A team tie ties it up with just about seven minutes left. Really good back and forth battle here. A team underperforming at this event. I don't think they can get in if they win this one. Maybe. We'll have to see the math come in. If only Brett were a semi-pro player or coach, he would know the exact situation. I don't want I don't want to take my attention away, but if you gave me a few minutes on APPA, <laughs> I could I could dial it up for you. <laughs> Brett, uh, a wizard of the APPA math. <laughs> it's important info. Yeah, and a business owner, an opinionated guy, likes to think for himself out there. Really love having Brett Messer in here. Wow, we're looking at the VIP. Fans out here over on the uh, Premier Field sidelines. See a lot of Blast Camp support over there. Yeah, hometown team. Wow, well, looks nice and shady over there. Got some sun in the eyes. Got some some fans waving in Thunder shirts. Got a lot of phone action. Checking Instagram. Yeah, you got some Check Thunder Phoenix Rising connection here. With, oh, with oh, Corey, Corey Field, that's Unger right. Unger being a former Thunder player. Right, that's so right. So I, I don't know how deep it runs or what the details are, but, but it seems like they're coming out to support. We'd yeah. love to see it. I love what the NXL is doing with the Premier Field here, uh, putting women's paintball on a on a bigger stage, putting the semi-pro guys on a bigger stage. Yeah. I think it sets you up more for success when you move to pro. And a lot of people want to see this paintball. Yeah, so. and it's been dramatic out here. It's been a lot of fun to watch. Looking at Phoenix Rising's breakout, pulling up, try, trying to shoot Nate Marshall. They haven't been able to do it yet. Nate, they do this time, though. Nate Marshall gets shot off the break, and Phoenix Rising makes the snake off the break. Running ref going in to check the Dorito side tower player for Phoenix Rising. Says he's clean. So Phoenix Rising in control. Five on four with the kill off the break. They're going to kill another of the Dorito side wedge. So five on three advantage for Phoenix Rising. Down two with seven minutes left. Sliding into the Dorito wedge to pick up any fillers on the snake side. Hammering a bounce shot from the Snake 2. Trying to bounce one off the pin into the Snake side tower for Brawl. Looking at 23 on Phoenix Rising. Shooting the cross. Making sure no one fills out. I'd love to see Phoenix Rising Snake player go forward here. For sure. I, that's one big difference on this field is the Snake players here are, seem very content in Snake 2. Uh, and a, a big, you, know, you know the pace is different on the pro field. But those guys... Uh, you're going to go into their snake immediately. See, he's, he's yeah. trying to play that game again. Yeah, he did, the guy doesn't in. know what's in front of him here. I know Nate Marshall has made it a lot out here, so he's wary of a Nate Marshall presence in there, but doesn't have it. We've seen Haber on Distortion, former pro player who's been playing with dominant pace. He's probably been the strongest player out here so far. He likes to take a knee at the box, shoot wide, and then run snake, and then he's on their side if no one touches I love him. That. Yeah. yeah, it's been fun to watch. Distortion playing really well. Phoenix Rising's now closed this one out against Brawl. That's Cohen, number three on the snake side over three here. Two. Three, two, anybody's game with five minutes and 50-something seconds left before they hit the buzzer. And that's something these guys will learn as they get their shots in pro for, for the guys who are competitive. And uh, it's just one of those things where you could have closed that game potentially in half that time. Yeah. It, it reduces the opportunity for your team to make mistakes if you just go down onto the other side and, and shoot three or four guys. So certainly and that's just communicating that sneak kill off the break and seeing that happen a lot of guys coming in 
you know, to the snake side spots and shooting inside to start so they don't see that one as he walks off the yeah. field. But you got to get that from someone who is shooting. Yeah, and typically way. what you see in semi pro is really excellent communication. That's something that seems to really uh, elevate from the Division two level to the semi pro level. They don't typically miss things like whether there's a snake or not a snake. Yeah, certainly. And the teams like Blast Camp, who's walking on the field right now in a tie game against A team, Paintball Fit. Um, Austin Notorious, another team with a lot of Michael Kovar, formerly of exactly. Yeah, he plays them. ten man with us a little bit. Love that dude. Yeah, he's played uh, really great talented. Out here. He's been playing the two behind um, Austin Barnes Jr. for them. Who's been who's one hundred percent off the break going to the snake. Yeah, and that's another team that's got a good support system. You know, they've got some backing. They've got you know a good home field at, at X Factor. Sitting in third place overall. Overall, okay. so they, they're not out of it, but. Blast camp in second, knocking on the door behind Paintball Fit. They run the Papa out to the snake side Aztec, but he catches one in the face. And you can see that's why Blast Camp really likes that double double snake can. Yep. They're just getting out wide on the snake side can be kind of brutal. Yeah, A team also loses one, so it's four on four right now. Doing dumping the hopper paint out of the Dorito side can for Blast Camp. You break a ball in there, you gotta dump everything. Soap now launching into the snake side tower for Blast Camp. A team is in the Dorito side wedge, trying to keep anyone from going into the snake for Blast Camp. A team also standing tall over the Dorito one, trying to put together some offense on that side of the field. Now he launches into the Dorito three. His buddy follows him up into the Dorito one and picks up the zone. Cunningham, number 54, is in the snake side can for A team. Oh, Blast Camp. Blast drops Camp their loses one. another out of the Dorito one. So, four on three advantage for A team. However, so. Oh, I thought. Oh, he gets blown up by his own guy, I think. Uh oh. I think, I think Jackson on the wrap. Yeah, the way that Soap's looking at him, blasted Soap in the side of the head and then gets shot. It's a tough turn of events there for Blast Camp. A team, uh, four just on one here. four on one, just the Dorito side can for Blast Camp. Gonna need a miracle. Gonna sneak over to the snake side can. They didn't see that move, which is what you want to do in these low percentage situations. Get a little lost and catch someone being sloppy coming forward. Now he sneaks out into the snake side can, trying to catch the snake down the wire. He shoots his gun at the snake side insert, and then Cunningham comes up and catches him trying to move again. So 18's gonna take a 3 2 lead. Don't touch it, his players telling him, let's let them blow the horn. Kill some time off this. You know, we got a paint tab. We got to play. Yeah, and you said eight teams out of the tournament, so ultimately it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Typically, the mindset is if you feel like you're an inferior team, you're going to want to play less points. If you feel like you're the superior team, you're going to buzz it really quick. Try to play as many points as possible. Give yourself the best chance to win. Love that. So getting animated in the eight team pit, fired up after taking the lead. Now we got brawl. Phoenix Rising stepping out here as the shadows are getting real long. It's it's going to start to affect the game a little bit when you're on that Dorito side shooting those cross shots with the sun in your eyes. They did a good job with the field placements they here. They did. They did. So it's, it's very north-south. It uh, eliminates that, that east-west sun in your eyes. Yeah, I remember playing a tournament or two where there's the sun in your eyes side for the finals and the good side, and you had to win all of your points on the good side or you were in trouble. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure at some venues they don't get good options, but they did right. a great job here. So shout out NXL. So Brawl up three to two against Phoenix Rising. Phoenix Rising calling red alert from their pit. Or actually Brawl is. They're just going to go short to the Snake Aztec and they shoot the Phoenix Rising player going wide off the break. So 5-4 advantage for Brawl here. With all their bodies alive. Phoenix Rising with... Both cans, the back center and the Dorito 3. And now moving into the Dorito juice box. So some attack for now into the Dorito 3. Yeah. yeah, the big Dorito 3 for Phoenix Rising on your screen. Being contained by the back center and the snake side can. Phoenix Rising dipping out into that snake insert. Trying to generate some offense and spread the field. Down a body against Brawl and down a point. Five minutes left on the clock, so plenty of time. Trying to put together a point, find a kill, and even the body count here. Playing tight. Phoenix Rising mirrored up with the Brawl player on the Dorito side here. Nice little Dorito battle developing. Phoenix Rising player trying to hop out wide and get creative, but the Brawl player goes high, misses a shot. 
comes out again, but now Phoenix Rising doesn't want. No, he's going to run the highway on him. The brawl player oh, feels it. Though. Wow. Young hops out there, feeling the pressure. Spidey senses tingling. So the Phoenix Rising player comes away empty-handed, now going to lose the two-player behind him. So Brawl firmly in control of this point now with Nate Marshall sliding into the Snake 2. I think it's a four on two. Uh, yes, just the Snake can and the Snake insert for Phoenix Rising. And they're going to get a minor penalty. In. They'll pull off their last two and players. And shot before he pulls them out. I mean, ultimately, they should be starting down 5-4, but they might be nice to him here. Yeah, and if you're Brawl, you want to call that out, but I'm not sure they will. Yeah, they're up 4-2 they're up and yeah. out of the tournament, so... They're not really interested in long debates with the ultimate rep at this yeah, point. Yeah, everybody wants to get out of here right now. <laughs> and you got to pick your battles, right? You, <laughs> right, know, you, you can't get... say that on the live cast when we're trying to maintain an audience. <laughs> what, what is that? <laughs> Everyone's trying to get out of here right oh, now. <laughs> oh, I mean, like, the refs, the, yeah. the people that have lost. I know, no, I'm teasing you. I would, Like, at the seven-man field, we were the last game over there for the day, and you could tell the refs are like, please, like... Okay, shot in the foot for the Phoenix Rising player. For their can Snake player. Can. Yeah. Playing on, gets the minor penalty. Looking at Jackson Frey, walking on the field for Blast Camp. Down one to Annapolis A team. Another good back and forth match over To explain here. a little bit for the non paintball people at home, if a player is getting pulled on a penalty, but they get eliminated from an opposing player before they're pulled on the penalty, they can't be assessed as the penalty body. And therefore, the penalty will be assessed on the following point. But it looks like they were able to pull that player out of there. I'm sure all the non-paintball people understood that perfectly. I, I was trying to make it, you know. <laughs> no, <Jesus. laughs> so A-team now here, line it up. Let's see what they go with here. That's Adams. Looks like he's going to run out Ooh. to the corner for A-team. Gets in there clean. He's going to try to crawl forward, but... Blast Camp was in that Dorito wedge waiting for him. So kill one for Blast Camp. I think they got all five alive. They did two in the can again. A-Team's a got up here to the Dorito Brick, though, which is really a good spot to lock the snake off. And Blast Camp's doubled in that snake can again. They are nowhere on the snake. So. Can that Brick shoot the fill to the insert over here? Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and very much so the, the God to the snake. Or God just, yeah, yeah, yeah. To the snake. So uh, and it, it's just a very dominant bunker. So we'll see what happens here. So, Jackson Frey makes a fill up the middle, which I like because he can put pressure onto that Dorito brick guy. You allow his his teammate I think here. He's to, in the wedge, not the brick. That's what I'm. That's oh, what oh I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's actually a great bunker yeah, to, to sure. lock off the snake fill and um, the Dorito three to Dorito four, the little right. brick over there. That seems like the more popular wedge out here. We're seeing it. I think if you had to pick one of all of them, that's that's the one. Yeah, one of the big secondary fills we're seeing are into those wedges. Blast Camp trying to battle back here. A team lost one off the break, but they are up three to two. We're looking at La Papa switching hands, trying to figure out where the bodies are, see if he can get into the snake. Jackson Frey rolling his gun from that snake side tower, trying to keep the A team uh, Dorito side attack honest. Good communication here from Blast Camp. You hear them chattering nonstop. Cunningham launching into that snake side tower. He's going to pick up the Dorito side zone for A team. Now Soap moving into the Dorito side tower. He's going to pick up the snake zone. Jackson Fry turning around to communicate. A team number 11 in that snake insert looking to go, but Blast Camp has the zone covered. A -team Jackson gonna, puts a shot in on the Dorito wedge. Yeah. That's going to open things up for his snake guy to go down the field if he wants. Yeah, La Papa feels it. Oh, oh but shot. someone picks it up. The Dorito the one Dorito picks, one up, the, cross, picks yeah. up the zone and shoots La Papa. Wow. Waited the whole game for that. And then another Blast Camp player dies up the center. So I think it's three on two in favor of Blast Camp. Cunningham coming through. I don't know. Maybe wanted to bunker somebody, wow. but didn't know where he was. It's so a I, one on two, I think. Yeah, I think it's just the Dorito outside two Dorito. For a team. Yeah, the small Dorito out there. But Jackson's patient here. He should be okay. He's yeah. got a teammate on the wire. Oh, yeah, yeah blows him away. Great job yeah. by Jackson Frey there. To close he's going to have up. a great first ball. He drills a lot. He, yeah. You know, he's one of those guys that works hard. Probably turned down some pro opportunities at this point to keep his team together with his boys. So Yeah, that was one of my favorite things doing my research for this event is looking at Blast Camp and just a couple other teams and seeing other APP. Uh, APPA scores are the same because yeah. they just grind it up together. Yeah, and honestly, one of their boys left. Uh, yeah, Hogue for, for exactly. Revo and then now on Aftermath. Exactly, and I think, I mean, with him still on the team, they're even more dominant than they are, and, you know, perhaps that just solidifies the two-horse race with, with PB Fit. Yeah, I wonder, it would take some audacity to try to steal Jackson because he's playing for his home team, but I'm sure that Soap 
on that team. A lot of teams have come barking at him, but yeah. you never know. I mean, it's ruthless up in pro. You know a little bit about that game of trying to get the available talent. Uh, yeah, this with some pickups this year. It, it's a tough grind. I mean, because the top pro teams don't even scout in semi pro. They scout on the bottom pro teams. They really want guys that have already played in pro. Oh, that's so interesting. So there's like this feeder system where the bottom teams, desperate to stay in pro and fend off regulation, are pulling up semi pro talent, and then the top pro teams are like, "Who's that guy?" Yeah, and it, then pulling. Yeah, them. or taking their top guy for you know right. their first couple of years. It's right. it's a very common occurrence. So now we're looking at Brawl up two against Phoenix Rising. Nate Marshall trying to get a good jump, running Snake off the break. He's been difficult to shoot there, but he gets caught there by Phoenix Rising, who then fills into this uh, Dorito side wedge to make sure no one else gets out wide for Brawl. Brawl kind of stuck in the back. They do have the Dorito side wedge. I saw someone come trucking up for Phoenix Rising. I think he shot the Brawl player in the pack. Yeah, they're on to Brawl side of the Doritos. Wow. So really big fill out for Phoenix Rising, up five on three in bodies and down two points with a really strong Dorito push. Still with two players in that snake side can. Look for one of them to fill out before too long. Brawl's remaining three players on your screen there. Now we're looking at Phoenix Rising with two in the snake can. Up bodies, they got a player so far up the Dorito side, you can't even see him on your screen there. Brawl snake side. I believe that's Young or Baker. No, that's Baker number 20 for Brawl. Backing off the snake side can. Trying to figure out where the Phoenix Rising players are. And just roll their guns up two points with three minutes left. Trying to hold strong while Phoenix Rising tries to figure out where the bodies are. I loses a body out of the snake can. I can't tell if he was trying to fill out or if he had been shot. So it's a four-on-three situation. Phoenix rising up in Brawl's Dorito. It'd be interesting to see how Brawl manages the clock here. Yeah. You I'm, know, are they, do they just try to lock it down and run the clock off, get a 4-2 win? Or are they trying to have some fun with it here yeah. being out of the tournament? Yeah, the, yeah. I mean, their body posture to me tells me that they're content to run it off. Agreed. They have the Dorito side can on the cross. They have the small Dorito on the outside, just making sure that Dorito 3 player doesn't come through. Now they got Baker inside at the Snake Aztec. I'd like to see Phoenix rise and get a player into the Snake. That, that's ultimately what's slowing them down right here. Yeah. They just don't have a presence. In oh, looks like he's going to go for it. Plays the blind oh. spot, tries to get some pressure on that Dorito side can who dies. So just two bodies left alive. The snake insert and the small Dorito for Brawl. Brawl loses the Snake insert, so just the small Dorito. It's a matter of time here before Phoenix Rising figures out where he is, tries to put him away. All right, we got a game here. We got a game. Going to be down one with about a minute 40 left, which is plenty of time to tie this game up. Phoenix Rising showing some grit in their first NXL event of the year. Really strong showing from them. Um, we had some other throw-together teams out here that looked like throw-togethers. You can tell Phoenix Rising, new here, not a new team. Yeah, absolutely. Last camp there. Second ranked semi pro team getting ready to come out. Choose your path. Our coach is yelling. Oh, no, that's actually the A team coach. I like that phrase, though. That's dramatic, you know? Absolutely. You say dramatic stuff in the pit ever, Brett? Occasionally. Yeah. You know, Are I, you the I, hype guy over there or what? A little bit. I'd say Thomas Taylor, you know, kind of yeah, handles that pregame. Guy. Yeah, yeah. You guys a big uh, huddle team and get rowdy in there? Is it like a low-key huddle? Yeah, yeah, we get we get pretty rowdy pregame. Love to hear it. It's interesting. Team to team, it's different. You know, like some teams, it's kind of low-key in there, and if someone comes in and tries to get hyped up, it's like a little... I love all the little stuff teams yeah, do to get oh, gassed too. up. You know, yeah. Dynasty's chant, Aftermath chant. Oh, yeah. You know, they're, everyone's got their own thing. I like that. So A team breaking out. Ethan Adams pulling up at that snake side can with Cunningham. Two in the snake side can is becoming a common maneuver out here. Blast camp staying short. Filling both those towers. Soap shooting the Dorito way, but Kerr able to slip into the Dorito side wedge and pick up that snake zone. Meanwhile, Cunningham gets into the snake side wedge. He looks like he wants to get into that snake brick. Changes his mind, looks inside Dorito way. Catches some heat there, trying to communicate. 
Blast Camp, meanwhile, crossed up in the towers. Both teams really looking like they don't want to make a mistake here. Yeah, Adams in that snake insert. He's catching a ton of heat from the Dorito 1 and that Dorito Tower, who now comes into the Dorito Wedge to pick up the superior shot on that zone. Soap moving into the snake can. Blast Camp's kind of changed their posture. They're looking like they're going to want to win this game. Soap comes forward. I think he takes a bounce coming into the 50 brick. They should Ooh, he know might. he's there. Maybe not. His bunker's not getting shot. He he seems like he wants to come through. Adams getting low. He's just worried about the god guy here. The, yeah, the snake which is insert. Ethan Adams. He's got these pins working for him. If he gets this kill on, on Mike Kerr, I could see him launching forward 60 for 60 seconds in a tie game. This is going to be the point. Whoever wins this has a huge advantage. We do have ties here in semi-pro. So there could be no decisive action here. Like Brett said, both teams looking like they don't want to make a mistake. Soap has offensive posture in the snake side brick. You know, he wants to win the game. He's com turning around to communicate. Now Blast Camp gets into the snake. This could really open things up. Absolutely. I don't even I don't think he was detected. He's not catching any heat. That's Jackson Frey. Oh, Soap makes a move into the pin, which is sort of ill timed, although he I think he does shoot Adams. Jackson Frey with an absolute move here. Yeah, great move by Jackson to start cleaning He doesn't realize there's still a Dorito 1. Okay, he, he found it. He comes him. around. He's going to shoot the Dorito 1 and, and hit the buzzer. With 12 seconds left. So we will have a little... Uh, we will have another point here. We run it off after 10, but not at 11. Just confirming with Rob. Still the teams playing. may choose to run it off here, but... I think... They're going to play the 11 They're second point it. out here. Okay. So A team will have the opportunity to sprint downfield. The Blast Camp faithful erupting on the spectator side as Soap and Fry, their dynamic duo, really pull out that point against A team. It was locked down. Soap started to press the issue with the move into the brick. Fry slips in undetected to the snake and then blows the game open, followed up nicely by La Papa. And, and that's really the, the recipe for a really tight point. You're playing on Sunday. You want to come out early, not make any mistakes, be five alive, figure out what the other team's doing, what your plan is, and, and move forward. And that's exactly what we saw from last game. And once Soap went into that brick, Kerr switched his attention on him. He didn't want Soap As to come through. As did their Dorito can. And, and their Dorito can. And... That attention focusing on soap allows Fry to slip into the snake undetected. Getting in there undetected really changes the game quickly. Yep. So now we're looking at Brawl up one with a minute 42. They had a two-point lead. Now down to one. Let's see what they go with here. They send Tom Sellers deep into the snake side brick I, off the I like break. That. He makes it. Nate Marshall pulled up short to the uh, snake side can. He's shooting inside. And then Phoenix Rising going to go into that Dorito side wedge. Might be looking to come through here. Bunker Tom Sellers. We'll see. The Dorito one player for Phoenix Rising also keyed up on Sellers. Phoenix Rising in the snake side insert. He's shooting inside. Got to be careful turning your back to that, that brick guy because there's a lot of ways he can come through safely. Sellers, including to that juice box. So Yep. Sellers looks like he's just keyed up for someone coming snake way. I think they're thinking as long as Phoenix Rising can't get into the snake, we're going to win this match with under 60 seconds now. Phoenix Rising knows he's there. Unger, you can tell, is trying to figure out the situation. You better believe that Unger is going to try to find it. Find he's not going to let time expire the in that bunker. Yeah. The cardinal sin of paintball, quoting Matty Marshall, is to stay alive, down points. Oh, here comes a wow. big dive in for wow. the 50 snake. I, he must not have known that brick was there because Tom Seller stands up and shoots him. Now Unger's coming. He definitely knows the brick is there. He stops. He's edging around. Wrapping the snake too. Should shoot that pin comes right over the top, to top and there shoots Sellers in the hopper. Great shot by Brandon Unger here. We're falling into the 50 snake. Now he's coming into the snake too. 15 seconds left. Unger's going to try to open up this game. He's looking at that snake can and the Dorito can in front of him. Gun battling like a maniac, which, which is what he has to do. He shoots one, but it's not going to be enough. No, Three players left alive for Brawl. Two, one. Number 30 coming through, but not enough Brawl. A lot of grit coming out and getting a win for Pride. Eliminated from the tournament. And it's got to be frustrating if you're Brawl because you tell yourself, if only we'd played that way the yep. whole tournament. Yep. Things might have been a lot different, but. Yeah, know. I've been fortunate to play on a lot of successful teams the last eight or ten years. But, I mean, I obviously spent many years before that in that situation where, you know, it's 
you didn't win the tournament. You're three. You're one and three. You're zero and four. And it. I mean, Saturday is it's a little depressing, you know. So that's what half of these teams out here are dealing with right now. It's tough. You go to that team dinner. Maybe you try to have a good friend with your boys, but those conversations always circle back to what we could have done differently, how we could have been in a different situation on Saturday night. Looking to get up early on Sunday morning instead of maybe changing our flights and going home. Yeah, and and I think a, lo- a big point of growth for a lot of paintball players is when they make the change from what they're blaming everything on to you know how harder, how much harder could we have worked? Like what, what I you, did wrong, what I can take ownership rather of. than the refing or you know blaming their teammates or whatever. Coming in here, eighteen down, one with eleven seconds left, Should sending it fully. I love to see what they're doing Full here. Sense. No, no playing in bunkers, coming through all at once. Sprinting downfield. Don't think they're going to get it. They're going to get a major penalty. Oh, this is actually, if this is on Blast Camp, that's, that's going to be a swing point. Was it on Blast Camp? Wow. I, I think I just heard Rob say point for Blast Camp. Okay, so that was on A team. That's going to be okay. a major on A team in our final action. So that's going to be 5 3 out here final. Today. 5 3 final for Blast Camp. Going in maybe as the one seed. Thank you so much to Brett Messer for coming in and calling this last game. Good luck. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. (laughs) Cardinal City, Rob, the head ref says, referring to the red flags that fly. It's good to see somebody like Jason Trozen out here for the semi-pro field because there's a lot of action out here too. And and these guys pay a lot of money to be here and they deserve to have that level of having an extra set of eyes just on the refs on the field. For sure. He, He takes a lot of abuse from coaches and players and handles it with, Poison and grace does a great job thanks i love again. how he's got his tape up here too he's like this is my zone so <laughs> yeah we're also trying to have people not step on our cables out here uh, you know it's expensive it's expensive it, it costs money to be out here but well, shout out to you guys in the nxl for for putting the webcast on i know it's a lot of people are big fan of this so thanks good, for having me good luck to infamous tomorrow thanks everyone to our viewers out here at the nxl windy city major we will be broadcasting live again tomorrow morning, bright and early for the first Sunday match. Sunday paintball is a whole different animal. So please tune in tomorrow morning. And thanks to all our sponsors. We'll see you tomorrow.